Welcome to the fourth edition of All Killer No Filler podcast with me, Rachel Fairburn and Kiri pritchard McLean. Today's episode, we are talking about Elizabeth Bartery, the Countess of Blood. And we must stress before we do start talking about today's serial killer, we're not doing this podcast because we admire serial killers or we don't glorify them. We just have a, a mutual interest in them. And as long as we're doing this podcast, to be fair, it, you know, it's stopping us from writing to them in prison. So I think we decided that we wanted to do a chick, didn't we? Yeah. Because I know this is only the fourth one, but I mean, as a feminist, <laughs> I thought we should discuss a female serial. I think, I'm working on a little theory, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> I think that serial killers and comedians are quite similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an antisocial lifestyle that you're fondly never going to understand. Lots of late nights, lots of, I imagine the money that you have to add put to get any notoriety is exactly the yeah, same kind definitely. of definitely the amount of money you spend on bin line is <laughs> probably astonishing uh, and how much time you spend in, in dubious B&Bs yeah. as well and I think that they're similar as well in that you never just say oh serial killer Elizabeth Bathory you would say female serial killer yeah and it's exactly the same you never say oh comedian Rachel Fairburn it's female comedian yeah well it's Rachel like when, when they always have for uh, we need recommendations for female comedians for this gig female comedians as well oh list. comedians i hate that term it's, it's so isn't it? it's what so year like is it? 50s isn't yeah. it she's a comedian <laughs> and then she gets her boobs out at the end <laughs> it's just ugh. but yes it's female serial killer and i think the ratio is probably similar as well isn't it about 10 serial killers to one female serial killer which i think is about the same in comedy as well but you know what when the women do it they really do it fucking well they just like comedy exactly i think they commit to it don't they she's the elizabeth battery most prolific serial killer in history yeah alleged alleged not just female serial killer alleged most prolific serial killer even more than the beast of bolivia or harold shipman who are coming in at about 300 but um, Elizabeth Bathory is meant to have killed up to 650. Now, here's the sort of problem that we've had with her in that because it was in sort of like the 16th century, it's really hard to figure out what is fact and fiction. Yeah. And because it was such a shocking case, they've buried a lot of it. So we're going to try and present what we think are the facts in this, uh, rather than just going, yeah, uh, yeah she, put, she was a leather in that, <laughs> which actually does rear its head, but <laughs> we're going to try and keep it to the facts. So we're going to start by talking about her upbringing. She was born in 1560, put it into some kind of historical context. It was a really violent, bloody time, yeah. wasn't it? A lot of wars going. She was Hungarian. There was a war between the Hungarians and the Turks going on. Basically, everyone was kicking off in yeah. those days. So the Ottomans and the Hungarians were at war, but also the serfs, as they were known, who were Slovakian, I think, um, who were sort of the lower classes, were also at no- war with the noble people. As well. Basically, everyone was fighting, and she was brought up around a lot of violence. She was pregnant by the time she was 13. She's said to be very beautiful. Mm-hmm. This is a lot of the thing. Obviously, we can't prove that, because who is going to say to the richest woman, possibly in the world at the time? Yeah. Oh, mate. Could do something with your hair, love. You know, <laughs> not gonna Just run your finger through it. <laughs> yeah, so she was pregnant at the age of 13, which was fairly shocking in those days, but still not shocking if you consider the climate of, of kind of... They were basically hedonists, I think, yeah. that kind of era. I think the fact that they knew they weren't going to live very long... I think a lot of factors in the old or medieval times, especially if you're rich, if you knew you wouldn't get pregnant at 13, that's probably the equivalent of being 25 yeah. in those days because the lifespan was... Just... Yeah, that's true. I'd not thought about it like that. I suppose it's like the war as well, isn't it? My mum was telling me about in the Second World War. My grandma was saying, because no one knew if anyone was going to live from day to day. So the guys would come home from fighting abroad and they'd be like, oh, we've got a black baby, have we? And we're like, yep, yeah, let's just... <laughs> come on, I didn't think yeah. you were ever going to come back. Keep your chin up, stiff up a lip and all that. <laughs> stiff up or something. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she's pregnant at 13. By, uh, a pez- by one of the peasants as well. Yeah. Apparently. Which will go up. Yeah, and then the baby was apparently given away to a peasant family to bring up. So it was taken off her because they couldn't have a peasant baby in the family. So she was married to her own cousin because mm-hmm. they were big on inbreeding. Oh, keeping that line pure. <laughs> Uh, she was, yeah, she married a cousin at 15. So you're pregnant at 13, married at 15, which is like a country and western song. They got her to marry yeah, what was in bloodline her cousin so they could make a really strong empire. Mm-hmm. Because he, she was rich already, but he was really rich. And he gave her a castle when they got married, which is one of the ones that she spent most of her time in. Yeah. So she got this massive estate then. Well, I was listening to a documentary and they said, uh, they, oh, they were like, 
the posh and becks <laughs> of the day, which is, I don't know if they're trying to imply that posh and becks are sacrificing young girls to keep their youth. Although but you never know. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past I wouldn't put it past it. wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, maybe it's start with Rebecca Lewis. <laughs> yeah, he does look very smooth though, David Beckham. So. He does, yeah, he does. He look looks like a man who's getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting away with something, yeah, isn't definitely. it? Definitely. <laughs> She was a descendant of Vlad the Impaler, which is uh, obviously what um, inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. And also, battery means brave. It's like the Hungarian word for brave. So she's from this like great line of sort of people who are amazing in battle, but also apparently had a really horrible mean streak. So when just kill people, they were sort of into torture. That was re- that was basically normality for her because some of the things that she saw when she was a kid are pretty brutal. One of the tortures that they gave to someone was dying horse, and they sewed the man into the dying horse with just his head exposed yeah. and that was his that was and his then death. they left the horse and him to and die and they left them both to die which is I mean to see ugh. that as a young person apparently she was laughing sort of like in a maniacal way Ooh. when it was happening which just says to me or oh, it's so alarm it like, but then I suppose if you're sewing people into dead horses you're like oh, she's a bit weird she's really enjoying this she's like that's my girl yep <laughs> That's the spirit. But I mean, suppose being brought up around such so much war and torture when it's considered normal, that, I mean, now that there's a horse involved, it, maybe it was quite a novel thing to see. Like, oh, that makes a change from the rat. Like you say, this kind of, like, ultra-violent community, really weird, tor- torture's normal, and horrible things like this dead horse thing. Maybe it's like she just didn't... Know, maybe she had no barometer of what's right and wrong. You know, like when you go to university and there's someone who puts bread in the fridge and you're like, <laughs> what are you doing that for? And they're like, well, we always do it at home. And you're like, that is really weird. It's just cold bread. Stops it going... No, it doesn't stop it going off. You've just it's, made it cold. Yeah, you've yeah. just made it cold and you've taken up half a shelf. So I, th- I think it might be that. Also, she had... Um, so you, basically, you get a, a violent childhood. She used to have fits and seizures. So I think there's some frontal lobe yeah. damage going on. And apparently that ran in the family as well, didn't it? A lot of them were prone to fits and sort of seizures and things and... Fits of anger. Yeah, she had fits of rage, didn't she? Loads of inbreeding going on. Also, she's... Because apparently she was really, like, sexually active in that she used to just... She's very beautiful, very powerful, wander around the village and be like, you, have sex with me now. Even from the age of, like, 13, she was like that. So she's probably syphilitic as well. Oh, probably, How do you not get a murderer out of all those things? Just have that power, though. She's... I think she's kind of the, the most dangerous kind of person. A sexual sadist with power. Mm. That... Is. Yeah, because when they're just in their, like, one-bedroom flat in Mile End in London, you know, like, choking themselves yeah, and masturbating in front of that, the 10 o'clock news, they're just keeping themselves to themselves. But when it's like, I've got the power to just kill and maim people as and when I want, yeah. that's when it's like, oh, no. Well, it's like a bit like Jimmy Savile, isn't it? You know, oh, I want to do this. Nobody's going to stop me. Yeah. I can get away with anything. Maybe she worked for the BBC as well. Probably, yeah. A pervert uh, with power. <laughs> Well, it was her husband that got her into torturing. He, he was like, I don't know if it was on their honeymoon or whatever, but he started to teach her. And then it was sort of like the teacher becomes the master because she had a real flair for it. Didn't yeah, she? she really took to it. Once she was shown how to do it, that was it. It was her, she was well into the old torture. One of her uncles was a instructor in Satanism. Her auntie was into sadomasochism and taught her all about sadomasochism. And she was an out lesbian as well, yes. wasn't she? Which was quite, I mean, it sounds quite unusual, but it sounds like they were just doing whatever they wanted then. I mean, obviously, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I'm all for gay pride. But yeah, she had a, a, yeah, an auntie who was, a, I think the phrase that I used that I read was notorious lesbian. Notorious lesbian. <laughs> I think that's a rapper, Elizabeth's isn't it? auntie. Yeah, so she taught her sadomasochism. Really, she got really into it. I think it's just a case of so many mad people with so much power, nobody's doing anything. Mm. And to them, obviously, it was quite normal. Just been... She had an uncle who was an instructor in Satanism and an auntie who was uh, into sadomasochism and taught her all about that. I can't relate to the batter at all because, like, my uncle was a driving instructor and the only thing my auntie has ever, like, taught me is, like, don't trust men whose eyebrows meet in the middle. <laughs> and if you look at my catalogue of exes, I've clearly not listened to her. <laughs> Some of the theories as well about why she tortured because they said um, it's because she was she was gay and couldn't deal with it because she used to sort of like burn their genitals with candle it was always usually focused around mm. sort of sexual organs I, that doesn't stack up to me at all because if she had a, an, a lesbian auntie that was sort of like her mentor 
you wouldn't be like, oh, I can't possibly be gay. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, stack it up. doesn't ring true to me that either because she she was in a position where she could do what she wanted. Yeah. In that position, she could do what she wanted. I mean, she had a husband as well, and she also had four or five children. Yeah. I think wasn't it? She would just have got on with it and done as she pleased. Well, yeah, because she did whatever she wanted in every other respect. So why would you say yeah. that? So she was a sadomasochist and at least bisexual. Mm-hmm. She was massively into torture. She sounds like a right fucking laugh, to be honest. She's Without a doubt, yeah. She sounds like someone who you probably wouldn't go on holiday with, but you'd have a really good, like a hen night would be fucking <laughs> brilliant with her. You'd wake up with a new tattoo and probably missing a toenail. Yeah. You'd be like, oh God, I love it when Liz oh, comes out. Going out with Lizzie tonight. <laughs> oh, blimey. Yeah, yeah, I've got flat shoes, just in case. <laughs> she had this massive, massive empire. So big that the king at the time owed her money. That's how powerful her family was. And when her um, husband went away to war to fight, which he frequently did, and was known for being really brutal mm. on the battlefield, she used to just run the whole empire. I, I was was watching a documentary where someone said she was an unusually intelligent woman for the time, which I don't think is the right phrase. I think that means she was unusually educated. It wasn't like, yeah. isn't it mad when a woman's <laughs> clever? Yeah, but she spoke loads of different languages. She would take... See, there's, there's a few things that I think, hmm, is that... Are we getting to know the real her? Because apparently she, there was a woman whose daughter was raped and she sort of helped her out and helped it get to the courts and would defend women. It tended to be noble women that she took an interest yeah. in, but she would defend them and help them with their affairs if her husband died and things. Yeah, see, that's quite interesting. The fact that she ran, this huge, ran the huge empire that she had while her husband was away, taking control of everything. Back in the 1500s, 1600s, that's a massive thing for a woman to do yeah. back then. And it does make you think, is everything else surrounding her crap, basically? Yeah. And it apparently because... she was a very good mother as well. Yeah, it's probably doting mother, I think the phrase yeah. was. So, I don't know, there are some things that seem to be in an almost exact yeah. opposition to the the picture that's painted of her so how it came to trial how all these uh, horrific crimes came out is she used to kill peasant girls and then she ran out of those even though there was 17 villages surrounding her castle that she owned and then she moved on to noble women because it was noble women they couldn't ignore it anymore so they set up a task force which the king sent and basically these guys sort of descended on the castle and so it was horrific Mm. said it smelt like an abattoir which is such a graphic description isn't it Lizzie your castle stinks oh mate Um, but then people can't smell their own houses so we shouldn't judge her too harshly should we and it actually, I bet I smell of dog all the time and I've got no idea. Well, I can't smell it. I've got a terrible sense of smell, actually. But saying, like, you know, people can't smell their own houses, it sounds like something your mum would say if, if you've been cheated on. <laughs> oh, come on, Rachel. You know what it's like? People can't smell their own houses. <laughs> it does sound like, yeah, it yeah, does sound it like be a, on a fridge magnet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always remember, you can't smell your own house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they went to this the castle. Dogs Basically, running around. Those with, dogs, yeah, yeah, running around with bits of girl in Ooh. their mouth. Though it was all sort of shallow graves, so the dog would dig them up and eat them. Ugh. There was a girl who was sort of half burnt, who then died of her injuries later. There was another girl who's in the a process of being tortured. Yeah, so this is allegedly they turn up at this castle. One, it stinks. Two, the dogs running around with bits in the gob. And then allegedly they go into like the torture part of the castle, and Lizzie's there actually torturing a girl. Mid torture. It just seems like it's a really sort of shit sitcom, doesn't it? <laughs> that they walk in and she'd just turn around covered in blood and just shrug and they'd all go, That's Lizzie <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see that on Nickelodeon. I'd like to see that on Nickelodeon. I don't know why well. they're picking on it, because they went into her house and announced, like, the British gas came o- a guy came over yesterday. I was in the bath. I'm going to get straight back in my bath when he carries on, because it's like, it's my house, I'll do what yeah, I want. Yeah, like, you know, they, they didn't turn up unannounced. There was no warning. If there had been warning, maybe she could have hid the bodies and, you know, done a quick dust round. Yeah, exactly. Done a bit of shake and vac yeah. and burn some incense. It started a massive trial. They, they had 300 witness statements. Although, said witness statements... <laughs> We don't know how reliable they are. The statements they took, most of the people couldn't read or write. Well, because what they would do is they'd go, they'd write down their statements as they said them and they go, does this look right to you? And then they'd look at what probably to them looked like hieroglyphs and were like, yeah, that's fine. That'll and do. most of them were signed with an X because they, did, they didn't have a signature. So they just had to make a mark on the paper. So I, I, we don't really know how much of that is true. But, but they did interview her accomplices because she had like a team of torturers. Yeah. 
And what a team they were. There was a witch, a dwarf, and a servant. <laughs> Walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> and kill a load of women. So they have this elderly, sort of very dark black magic witch from the village. It was a deformed dwarf called Fisgo. Fisgo. I love that name. I like that name. Oh, it's, a great, it? it's a dog's name, isn't yeah. it? Fisgo. <laughs> Fisgo. And, and then the serving woman. And they would assist her in her torturing. The authorities then tortured them to get them to give evidence. Because at the time, it was deemed that any evidence or, or statements got under torture were more reliable mm. than those that were just given uh, that were volunteered and that is the most perverse logic I've ever heard yeah one of the evidence things that they gave it was one of the actual tortures Elizabeth and her um, cohort did was apparently one of them they put a woman in a cage with spikes in it they would all stand around watching Fizgo the dwarf would shout sexual obscenities at her as somebody just prodded her to death with a spear standard I have to say like re- when I read that I thought you know I've had some bad dreams <laughs> but it's like something you would be in bed at night you'd be dreaming it and you wake up and you go, well, that was weird. I wonder what the dwarf means. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to travel. It's like really sort of a strange scenario. <laughs> As if, like, it couldn't be terrifying enough, but just to look round and there's a witch. It's like a cannibal corpse dwarf. music video. Or Marilyn Manson. Completely bizarre. Bring in the dwarves. <laughs> At the end of the trial, they killed they killed her accomplices, but not her. So the women, apparently, they cut their fingers off with red hot Ooh. pincers, which just sounds horrendous. Yeah. And then they threw them on a fire, and then Fisgo, they disemboweled him, and I think they burned him afterwards. It sort of sounds like the kind of stuff that they were accused of doing to other people, but mm-hmm. now there's just a, a judge involved in it. So. Yeah. But it sounds exactly the kind of thing Elizabeth would have really enjoyed. Yeah, she probably... I mean, if they let her watch, that would have been perfect. Yeah. She probably would have got off to that. <laughs> so here are some of the things. This is pretty strong stuff, so get ready. If you've just eaten, give it, yeah. give it half an hour. I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> so these are some of the things that she's said to have done. So she meant to have killed 650 girls. They're only prosecuted for 38 of those. Now, things that she's meant to have done. Burnt genitals with a candle. Made torture devices. So the one that you described that was like a cage yeah. there's cages as well that would, they would hoist up and then knives would come out the sides and there'd be knives in the ceiling and what would they do is one of them would swing the cage so when they tried to move out the way of the knives Ooh. they would swing into another one and they'd just sort of hang there they'd oh this is the one the one she used to do with her husband was stick pins under fingernails and toenails and burn between the toes which sounds like although it's not the most like gruesome Ooh. it just sounds like the most painful doesn't it we've all yeah. got a splinter under your nail that really yeah makes you wince that one you used to cut the fingers off of maids that were disobeyed or did something wrong. Oh, the cold water death mm. is some of the worst ones. So they'd send a girl outside and then it, and strip her naked and then throw cold water over her again and again and again until it froze over her. You know, like Guy from The Shining. What apparently one of the serving girls did something wrong and she flew into one of her rages and she grabbed her jaw and pulled it open, <sighs> just like pulled the jaw off, which is just one it's of the worst mad, things isn't I've it? ever even, heard. It's not it even... takes some strength to do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. She's yeah. She must have been doing at least press ups every morning. Definitely. I, I kind of think it's more visceral than when someone shoot like the Zodiac killer shoots people. Yeah. And you're like that's a stepping or, or even stab someone, but to physically take your hands on somebody's jaw. Well, the other one as well is that she was because they the thing if she was six hundred fifty, she killed about seventeen people every year. She was really sick in bed and uh, she couldn't go down and torture, so they ordered for a serving girl to be brought up to her, and uh, they brought this girl up, and then she just sat up in bed and then apparently bit her neck and then was taking chunks out of her neck and her breasts which is like bleh, the strength to the do strength that. To do it, yeah. Sometimes I struggle with halloumi, <laughs> let alone <laughs> let alone a serving girl. And especially in those days when I always think people's teeth were rancid. Yeah. Back in the fifties, they were just but... gumming it. Yeah, that's what concerns me. I always imagine she'd be biting it a bit, so the teeth would be crumbling out. Oh god, it's just horrible, isn't it? Yeah, I had a reason once. You know the chocolate chips. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lost a molar to one of them. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so so sad to read about all these girls because they just had no way of no one would believe them and, and no one would do anything because they're peasant girls and, and ultimately I don't think anyone cared at the time I yeah. think it was a bit like oh well you know. well actually there was a, the one of the local like vicars wrote a letter to her saying you need to stop doing it and he was considered very brave because he said it's beyond because torture and well bad treatment of serfs was normal but at, like explicit sadomasochistic torture wasn't and he was like come on you can knock them about a bit but can we stop cutting their fingers yeah. Yeah, please. Just- can you keep him in one piece? Yeah, so he already put his head above put his head above the parapet with her and was considered very brave. But it just seems incredibly sad that these girls would just go, oh, well, that's another one gone then. They could recognise her carriage going through the villages at night with 
the with the two black horses and they they would try and hide the girls but she just yeah she ran out of them in the end and i just think with those 650 girls you know when they do what's it called hypnotherapy and they take people back in time and they're always like regression yeah that's, that's it, it regression yeah. isn't it so like what can you see um i can see a pyramid i am cleopatra <laughs> there's something like one in like every 60 people will say that they were cleopatra in a previous life if it was anywhere near accurate i think that we would all probably be a murdered peasant or well, 650 of us certainly yeah. would be like i'm getting my fanny burnt with a, a candle there's a dwarf next to me <laughs> There's a dog carrying a, yeah. a girl's <laughs> girl's arm around the place. It smells really bad. <laughs> yeah, I think with this... Knowing my luck, I'd definitely be a murdered peasant girl. I just think I'd be an average peasant girl. I'd be regressed and I'd be like, yeah, it's, it's 1542, I'm, I'm 17, I'm now 20 and I'm dying. Nothing happened. Just consumption. Uh, yeah, that'd be it. So she, her nickname is the Countess of Blood, mm. which is pretty fucking cool. That is, <laughs> I know, yeah, that is a cool nickname to have in it. Uh, Rachel thought, just call me the Countess of Blood. I think this is where the biggest part of the myth comes in, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah, apparently she was just said to bathe in the blood of, of virgins or the girls, any of the girls that she'd killed so, so to keep her young. There is a, an instance where apparently she hit one of her maids, of course she did, broke her nose and the blood went on her hand and she rubbed it into her hand and she was like, oh, well, this has rejuvenating qualities and decided from then on that she was going to use blood. I'm not sure if I believe the, the maid story because if she was torturing people every day, which she probably would have, she was surrounded by so much blood, why would it take somebody's nosebleed to just, oh, yeah. just rub it in there, that'll do it, that'll do the trick. Also, to bath, in blood. We have eight pints of blood in our body, I think mm. it is, isn't it? How many pints of that is it? How many people have you got to drain? It's a shit bath, isn't it? Eight that pints. is a shit bath. A horse bath. It, and you just have to kill so many people and then, did she warm it up? I was it a that, cold like, bath. Did they, yeah, yeah it's, cold bath in blood. Oh my it, god, it must it have seems stunk. really, yeah, oh god. I just, I don't, that's, I have to say, I don't believe that bit of the story. I think she probably did use bits of, you know, drops of the blood, maybe she did rub it into her skin. I don't think she ever bathed. Well, they said that she was obsessed because she was so beautiful. It was all about stopping the aging process wasn't no. it you, having said that maybe i can believe it because i think if you're that vain for example if somebody turned around today to, to said to kim kardashian oh kim um you know what's really good for keeping you looking young if you kill a baby <laughs> um, drain its blood and just rub it all over your face you're gonna look fantastic i think she would do it think, if she's yeah. not already yeah that's true yeah, she's like I, sacrificing kids already i think people would do it. I mean, people put things like lamb's placentas on the faces, don't do they? they? Yeah, there's that. There's another blood um, facial thing that you can have where I think they prick your skin so you bleed and then they rub the skin over, the, the blood over your face. There's pictures of it on there's some beauty website I was looking at on, it's on there. I'm sorry, that's just grim. That's oh not... God, why are people so fuck stupid? I don't know. Vanity's grim, yeah. isn't it? I, I, I think this whole bathing in blood thing is bullshit as well because one of the witness statements, one of the incorrect witness statements, said that, that when she used to torture, sometimes there was so much blood and the people she was torturing that they would have to scoop it out by the pail. Who was that precious blood? You wouldn't just be like, oh, just let it go all over the floor. You would have stuff that you'd, would decapture it. Yeah, you'd be it? draining somebody and, you know, getting the bucket and making sure people kept it. Yeah. You know, then put it straight in the bath. I've had a oh, long be day. Right. You'd have a system going, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you'd have a system. So I think, I do think that that's a myth. I think it comes from something. Oh, do you think there's a seed of something? I think there's something. I think maybe she did rub a bit of blood on her face at times. Or or maybe she executed when she was killing people and torturing them. Maybe she was covered in so much blood. They were like, oh, she's been bathing in it. Yeah. She's covered in it. Maybe Always it was... to rub it on her face because she's batshit enough to do stuff like oh, that. Oh, of course. Well, yeah, definitely. She's at least rubbed it in her face. <laughs> at least. <laughs> right, I'm just saying at the very least... <laughs> She's rubbed it in her face. <laughs> there is an alternate and ever-growing popular movement amongst, it is particularly um, sort of Hungarian academics, who think that she was misunderstood. And they think that she was massively fucking stitched up. Because one of the things is, the king who she owed money to, who ordered the trial mm-hmm. in the first place, he knew that if she got prosecuted, her estate would automatically go to the crown. Ah. So they were like, oh, well, that's not very fair because mm. he's got motive there. Because his for a start, his debt would be written off and he would inherit all of her lands and therefore legitimately make him the most powerful person as opposed to just the king. So there are more and more people who think that she was actually a doctor uh, or that she was performing abortions for the local girls that needed them. and that she, Because that's one of the things that she said. She asked the court to give mercy and she said, I was just helping them. She said that certain girls were frequently diseased and frequently injured 
and that she was just helping them. One of the guys I saw an interview with on a documentary, he he shows a guy, he went, look at this, what does that look like? And the guy's like, yeah, like a torture instrument. He's like, no, not so. This is actually for heating up and then cauterizing wounds. And that was one of the things that was found in her castle. And it's like, how does it make sense? That's still just because it can be used for medicine. Scalpels can be used in medicine as well. That doesn't mean anyone using a scalpel is a hero. And that is just one of the things. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, yeah. Just one of them. (laughs) What about the cage cover? Nice. Not, oh, that's for getting rid of warts. You've not seen the hacksaw that she cut people's legs off with and then <laughs> used the tool to cauterise the stump. Do you know what I mean? It's it's so frustrating because you've got no way of knowing, have you? Because it's so long after everything. We're never going to know the truth about it. There is... Something was going on. I don't think she was helping them. I mean, performing abortions. Yeah, that's... I, I, don't, I don't believe that she was, like... Getting this, get this spiky cage while we get rid of that unwanted baby. Yeah. Well, maybe she hoped the stress would do it. <laughs> <laughs> Send in the dwarf. Just make, a, make them wear high heels and drink loads of gin <laughs> instead. That's what the Victorians did. But I no, I can't believe... I mean, part of me wants to believe that she's, like, this amazingly powerful woman that loads of, like, guys feel threatened by and then go let's stitch her up mm. and that they they then because like that to me is almost more romantic and heroic but i really don't believe with all the fucked up shit like uh, to a certain extent there's no smoke without fire and all the weird shit that she was doing I don't think she was bathing in blood but i no. do think that she was fucking bonkers and she was torturing people yeah and I, I think to go oh no she was um when you put uh pins under people's fingernails what you're actually doing is testing their reflexes yeah. it's like no it's, i don't buy that at all it's to ward off evil spirit I don't buy that and I think the jaw thing as well if that's yeah. true she's just mad yeah she's, she's just completely off, off the wall she's a crazy woman and prolific as well because as I said she she ran out of peasants and this is the thing while she was killing peasants no one A gave a shit and B could who gave a shit could do anything about it mm-hmm. because of this whole uh, fight between the noble people and the serfs they were terrified about doing anything that would upset the noble people in case they slaughtered them again. So they mm. would just let them take their girls. And But she just ran out of them. So what she did was she set up a boarding school. She, well, she set up like a finishing school in her castle and said to the noble people, oh, if you want me to teach your girl how to be a lady, I'm fucking she's the least ladylike person in the world, then send them to my school. And they're like, yeah, brilliant. And they'd send them there. And obviously they'd be like, oh... She fell out of the window. I'm really sorry uh, about that. Quite aptly named the finishing school. Isn't it? <laughs> you send your daughters to me, and I'll uh, I'll finish them for you. But once the noble women started, um, that's when people started. Yeah, that's a when shit. people started getting a bit. Hold on a minute. That's the thing that makes me um, hate boarding schools even more. That story. That again, like I feel dubious there because everyone must have known what was going on in the castle. Like, oh, there must have been rumours at least. So why knowing that and knowing what all these girls have got to be like? Isn't it funny that there's only lads here like wandering around modern day China like oh there's not many girls are there I wonder why that is must be a coincidence that, that you wouldn't then go yeah I probably will send my only daughter to her castle and just hope that she comes back I mean unless the, the fact that she was just so powerful they would be like maybe they, there was no choice maybe it was like you have to send your daughters here you don't know send them oh, here right, or this like, will happen make an offer you can't refuse yeah you, you don't know do you because she would be so frightened of upsetting her or getting on the wrong side of it. She was the most powerful person around. Maybe it was just like, off you go to finishing school. I suppose you can't refuse her because there was that soprano, wasn't there? Oh my God, yeah. The, she saw a soprano singing in one of the churches and she was so impressed by it. She thought she, thought she was brilliant. She invited her to her castle to give her a personal performance. Poor woman was so nervous because she was performing it in front of all these important people, uh, that Elizabeth, she, she sang really badly. Elizabeth Bar- Barsary decided she flew into a rage and uh, had her killed. Yeah, she tortured her as well. And she was a noble woman, this soprano. Yeah. And that's when they think, like, it started to, it just got so bad they couldn't ignore it. And that is a bad gig as well. <laughs> and we've like, all died ooh. on stage, haven't we? <laughs> uh, at least, give it an hour and you feel a bit better, but that is that is a really bad gig. At least when I tank somewhere, I then don't, like, I, I'm not, my life isn't threatened. Yeah. Like, if I have a ropey one, I just, I self-flagellate my car all the way back. I don't I actually get... And then, oh, you might just get a burger on the way home <laughs> and go, oh, I feel a bit better now. Everything's all right. <laughs> At least there's not the fear of actual death. So how they punished her was... Because they, they couldn't kill her. They She never gave evidence at the trial as well because that's one of the people, the people that defend her mm-hmm. use that as an example of going, well, we never heard what she had to say. She was never able to defend herself. So how they punished her was they couldn't kill her 
because her apparently the, all the noble people rallied around mm-hmm. all the batteries and said, uh, "No, you're not killing her." So what they did is they got a few rooms in her castle and they bricked her up inside them. She was fifty at the time, and they they bricked her up inside and kept her in like the same four rooms, and they would have slits for air and to push food through and then she died like four years later i have to say that is not punishment to me that sounds like luxury <laughs> heaven break me up in a room in my own house just have a slip for food netflix i'm happy i don't have to see anyone i don't have to speak to anyone i'm fine all right i'm surrounded by my own feces <laughs> and i'm covered in piss you don't maybe there was a slip for that a slip for shit yes yeah, so <laughs> a shit, shit slip <laughs> be more than happy to see out the rest of my days just walled up in a room in my house is that your is that your dream scenario that, that is my dream i'm like i want to live in a country house with loads of rescue dogs and foster children and you're like just fucking break me up and bring me up. leave me a slip for food <laughs> and a slip for shit <laughs> and i am happy yeah four years of, of heaven she had there four years of, of solitary heaven oh I, th- I think it sounds horrendous and also she because i mean what if she was innocent and you just bricked yeah, up and forgotten about. Up. Because this is the thing. They don't actually know when she died. Because when they... One of the guards eventually looked through one of the slits and saw that she was dead. And surrounded by plates of uneaten food. So she she must have been there a couple, at least a couple of days. That means that no one was really checking on her. Yeah. They were just pushing the food through. It's like, you know, when you're little and there's that spare room in your house you're frightened of. And your dad's like, <laughs> go and put them pillows away or whatever. And you just like run to the door and throw it in and then shut the Stop door. Because like, that's, that's where Dracula lives. <laughs> just me. I wonder why I'm into serial killers. I just think it's really, really sad. Especially when you don't know. You, like I said, she could very well have been innocent they could just have been very intimidated by her power and the fact that she was running all these you know this this kingdom with all these and had all this money and the king owed her money which is quite an important thing that we need to remember it is sad it is it's sad in every respect because it's sad that girls were dying whether they were whether she was legitimately a doctor and they were dying of bodged medical procedures and tuberculosis and everything else and cholera and syphilis and everything else that was knocking around back then. Or whether they were tortured, which is mm. horrendous to think of. There's no good outcome in this story. It's just incredibly sad. If, if the, only they would have taken photographs at the crime scene. Oh, God, yeah. And I could Google <laughs> them to my heart. Not very good with crime scene photos, you know. Oh, no, I'm not. I, I don't ever Google no, those. No, I think if you're Googling crime scene photos, you're a bit grubber. Yeah, do you yeah, think so? I think you grubber. You're in it for the wrong reasons. And you, you, Glory Hunter. Yeah, you're going to be in for a nasty surprise if you never, ever Google crime scene photographs. In fact, I'm not really sure why they're allowed on the internet anyway. I don't know why they're allowed. It's really easy to find pictures of dead people. I found this out. So I was reading someone's tweet, someone like Lefty, like Owen Jones, and then do you ever read that and then you read the replies by mistake and you just yeah, get into yeah. it? So I found some guy called like Pistol Rules and I clicked on him and he's like a pro UKIP guy who thinks that guns should be brought back to the UK that would stop, which is just such a fucking baffling that's one of the things we've got right yeah. is like no guns thank you yeah and that's... he's like yeah no that we shouldn't have to license them let's just bring them back and give he... everyone a gun well one of the things was the pictures that he had uh, he had used was like basically it was a guy in South Africa who tried to carjack someone and the back of his head was completely blown Ooh. away and I can't unsee that now and he was like another oh, no, carjacker brought to justice because he because the guy had a gun it's like yeah but the carjacker had a gun as well the reason why everyone has guns is because someone had them in the first place yeah, it's just like when people put awful pictures on and I, can't, I don't even remember what context this was in of Mexican drug dealers who'd been beheaded why are you putting that on Facebook or Twitter I I can read something and ascertain that something's horrific I don't need to see that picture onto her in the right context maybe in a, a textbook about that thing mm. and people just google them and it's like people who watch videos of beheadings what is wrong with you anyway we've gone right off topic here we digress oh. so that is elizabeth battery she's the most prolific serial killer she's also a lady i don't know what to believe i don't believe she was a doctor i definitely don't believe she was a doctor i think a lot of it's been embellished i don't think she bathed in blood no i don't think that she maybe did half the things that they they say she's... I wouldn't be surprised if what she did wasn't much more unusual than shit that was going on anyway. Yeah. But she was a, a figurehead for it to go, right, well, we're going to go after you because you're a very powerful woman. But again, that is my, uh, like, love of feminist yeah. conspiracy theory, me. So next week we decided to do a couple, didn't we? We did, yeah. So we're going to do Ian Brady and Myra Hindley. Who I don't know much about. Oh. But I know that they're local. Yeah, Gorton. Gorton, yeah. Moore's Murders. So it'll be an interesting one. 
because I think it's a case that a lot of people know about. Except no. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird that I don't know about it, isn't it? I know I look like her when I dyed my hair blonde and I had roots, but I don't know much about the murders. So we're going to be talking about that next time on All Colour, No Filler. I just want to say while we're here, lots of people have said that they really like our theme tune. I'd like to thank Will Duggan. Thank That's you, Will. Will Duggan on Twitter for composing that. And he just sort of bashed it out. That makes it sound like he masturbated. Um, I'm sure Will's bashed it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did actually record. There's a picture on the Twitter. He recorded it with his top off. Well, he has to no, because his uh, shirt kept making noises that the recording was picking up. So we were like, "Just whip your shirt off." And he did it. He didn't even go really. He just went. All right. It was off, it was like off before we'd finished the sentence. So this has been the All Killer No Filler podcast with Rachel Fairman and Kira Richard McQueen. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.